What's going on, y'all? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. As some of y'all may know, man, the financial game is under a lot of scrutiny right now with so many people on YouTube that are trying to expose people like Jay Morrison, people like 19 Keys, people are going at Earn Your Leisure. All of these different folks, man, I've been watching uh, Paco Bacho with JT. I know some people may feel uh, adversely about what his channel represents and he's really just giving financial advice and breaking down what's good and what's bad advice that's on the internet talking about scammer news and all of those things unfortunately it looks like invest fest 2023 is under a microscope right now because people i won't say everybody but there are definitely some people out there that did not enjoy their time they felt like they wasted their money and we're gonna get into all of those details right now, I'm on an article. Uh, when you see me looking down, I'm looking at my iPad over here. EmpowerAtlantaMagazine.com and they're documenting what's been going on in the streets. Empower Atlanta says, Earn Your Leisure's highly anticipated Invest Fest has come under fire as attendees express their disappointment and frustration with the event. Hailed as a premier gathering for financial education and investment insights, the festival has left many questioning its value and organization. Despite boasting an impressive lineup of renowned celebrities and business figures like Steve Harvey, Diddy, Robert F. Smith, InvestFest fell short in delivering a satisfying attendee experience for many people. Numerous attendees reported a lack of clear scheduling and communication as a major issue plaguing this event, with sessions running off schedule and limited information available about topics and speakers. Participants were left in a state of confusion, missing out on key sessions they had hoped to attend. One attendee by the name of Sean Henry was on Instagram and stated, I was so over the two hour wait, schedule changes, lack of information, even those working the event were not on the same page. The disarray not only disrupted the event's flow, but also hindered the networking and learning opportunities that were promised. Another attendee by the name of Charisma said, I have my pass if someone wants it. She was willing to give her shit away, God damn. This is the worst conference I've ever attended. Maybe someone else will enjoy the music and concerts, but I came to increase my knowledge and wealth. Okay, so this is one of the primary complaints that's going on with InvestFest is that it feels more like a social conference. It feels more like a social club. It feels more like a music festival than an actual investment, financial education, financial literacy conference. I'm not giving y'all my perspective on it because I didn't go, I was not there. I'm just telling y'all what the people are saying. She also went on to state, the wait to get in was one to two hours. They had pre-registration yesterday, but apparently turned people away. There was supposed to be all these speakers. No one spoke when they were supposed to, if at all. So some of the people didn't even show up. I was there for hours and only saw podcasts. When speakers should be on, there's a DJ, music and dancing. The acoustics are awful, so if you do catch a speaker, you can barely hear. I will be challenging this with my credit card company because I did not receive what I purchased. Now, hold on, Miss Charisma. You tripping. You can't dispute the charges because you paid for an event, went to the event, and it wasn't exactly what you expected. You didn't enjoy yourself. That is the chance that you take when you go to a public event. You did not coordinate this shit. I can see if you were a part of InvestFest you invested money into a certain part of the show or a part of the festival conference, whatever it is, and that was not delivered, yeah, you could dispute that with your credit card company. Just attending something and saying it wasn't what I expected? No, you out of bounds. Attendees have also voiced concerns about the quality of the content presented at InvestFest. Expected to provide attendees with actionable investment strategies and insights from industry experts, the festival instead showcased speakers who were either late or lacking the depth of knowledge expected from such an event. Many attendees left sessions feeling unsatisfied and questioning whether their time and resources were even well spent. The disappointment was palpable among attendees with disabilities as they found themselves excluded from fully participating in InvestFest due to a glaring lack of inclusivity and accessibility measures. The event's failure to accommodate diverse needs highlighted a missed opportunity to create an environment that caters to everyone. Attendees with disabilities express frustration at the barriers they encountered and emphasizing the importance of equal access to such gatherings. The absence of appropriate accommodations not only marred their experience, but also underscored the significance of making events like InvestFest truly accessible for all, ensuring that no one is left behind in the celebration. That's definitely a big ball that gets dropped. I'm not going to lie, man. Um, it's tough 
to really be fully accessible for people with disabilities. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm not saying that they don't deserve it. I'm just saying it costs extra money to create these barricades and these different ramps and stuff like that. Um, and I think that that's something that gets missed at a lot of events. I'm not just talking about Invest Fest. I've gone to conferences. I've gone to uh, food festivals, food truck events, a lot of different stuff. A lot of the times it's not the best situation for people that have disabilities, people that may need to be wheeled around in wheelchairs and stuff, you know, going through parks at different festivals. Like to be honest, the accessibility measures definitely need to be ramped up everywhere. We've got a Twitter user by the name of K Loving Music. He stated, second day at Invest Fest, such a wonderful experience, learning a lot already, but I am disappointed that they haven't really thought about people with physical disabilities in terms of seating or guides to elevators and lines. So I think K Loving Music, this is a woman, looks like she might've been in a wheelchair and she could not see over the line of men standing in front of her, which I think is uh, something that we also have to take into consideration as able-bodied people that are able to stand and able to get up close. We should uh, try to encourage helping those people get to the front, those with disabilities, so that we're not hovering over them to where their experience is being degraded. Furthermore, technical difficulties also added to the fire, disrupting sessions and leading to growing frustration among attendees. Audio issues were prevalent throughout the festival. They're calling it a festival now leaving many questioning the event's overall professionalism and preparation. Another Instagram user by the name of Crystal Sinclair. Please fix the sound. Some of us who have hearing issues are struggling right now. So not only are we talking about people that can't necessarily move around as they would like, we're also seeing a degraded experience for those that don't exactly have the best hearing. The article continues to state, with disappointed attendees taking to social media to express their discontent, Earn Your Leisure's reputation has taken a hit. The negative sentiment surrounding InvestFest highlights the importance of delivering on promises and ensuring a well-organized and valuable experience for attendees. Man, this thing just keeps on going. It's the gift that keeps on giving. For anybody that hates Earn Your Leisure, this would definitely feed the trolls that hate those guys. That's all I'm gonna say. Another Instagram user, Lil Amyo said, second time attendee here. Last year was amazing, okay? So this time we have somebody who attended the previous year, they said they enjoyed it. This year, not so much. This year was disappointing. The logistics were poor. No water stations for 20,000 people who had to walk so far to get anywhere. 12 small food stations with lines a football field long. 20K people can't all go to lunch at once. Stagger that. It was chaotic and congested with folks trying to exit a tight space all at once. The narrow escalators broke down. Diddy came three and a half hours late. I go to conferences all the time, so I know my expectations are normal. Next year, water stations, quadruple the food stations, put the food closer to us than the marketplace. Not sure if it was strategically reversed, but if so, that was cruel. And more directional signage. So they didn't have enough signs letting people know exactly where they needed to go. There's a lot of confusion. People were lost. And if you got 20,000 people in one location and a lot of them are feeling that way, it is going to lead to a lot of chaos. I gave my VIP band to some girl for free because I can't do this again tomorrow. Come on, y'all. We deserve better. Messing up your brand with these awful logistics. God dang. General admission tickets were priced at $300. So these people that have their complaints, they did spend a pretty penny just to be there. It's not like they paid 50, 60 bucks. So, all right, I think some of this criticism is pretty fair. VIP admission was priced at 1,800. Platinum VIP was priced at 5,000. And lifetime VIP membership was priced at 13K. Is this event really worth the time and money people are spending to feel like they've experienced an adequate treatment i do know somebody personally that went to invest fest this year he said he enjoyed it but he's also affiliated with them so you know i'm not gonna say i take his opinion as a grain of salt because i do trust his opinion but because of that i'm gonna say that there are mixed reviews not everybody is necessarily complaining but to be completely transparent this is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to people's criticisms of the financial community i think ever since 2020 you know everybody was forced to sit down. A lot of people were forced 
to try to find other ways to engage themselves when work was not there. Other people were forced to try to find other ways to make money. People got into crypto. People got into this NFT craze. A lot of people took their time to try to become day traders. A lot of people got into Forex. A lot of people joined Forex communities, did a lot of recruiting. And this led to a lot of confusion, right? Because now you have people that are trying to position themselves as experts in the financial community, in the financial institutions, right? But they're not fully experienced. They don't have actual education. They don't have actual real life day to day years behind what they're doing. They've been practicing this for three months, six months, and now they're coming out acting like they've been doing this for years. I know in Atlanta, particularly, there was hella people, some people that I know personally that I just been looking at with the side eye, like, bro, you know, you ain't really with that shit, bro. You just trying to make a quick flip and convince people you trying to sell people on a lifestyle you don't really live, but I'm gonna let you live. And that's just a microcosm of what's happened on the internet from Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. So many people came out trying to say all these buzzwords and stuff to get people to join their courses. As somebody who runs a course, I'm not shitting on people that run courses. I'm just saying, if you're not an expert, if you don't have expertise, if you're not able to actually show the people the ins and outs, different strategies that actually work, tell people about your failures, tell people about what did not work for you in multiple occasions so that they could have navigation through the maze because it's not a one size fit all. It's not a soon as you walk through this door, you're going to get to point Z type of situation. And anybody that tells you that they can guarantee you returns, guarantee you X amount of profits, guarantee you anything, they're absolutely lying to you, right? So let's just get that out the way. But all of that energy culminated into events such as an invest fest, right? Which is supposed to be encouraging people to get into the financial sector, encouraging people to be more liberated with their money, encouraging people to take financial literacy serious so they can own businesses, start businesses, uh, learn about credit, learn about owning homes, real estate, etc. All of those things are great when you actually invest real time and energy into it, actually take the time to learn all of the nuance, you're not gonna go to a two day event and spend 12 hours there and listen to 120 people speak and think you're gonna walk away with salvageable information that's gonna change your life. I'm sorry, that's just not the way it goes. I'm not saying that conferences are bad, I'm just letting you guys know why I don't necessarily participate in a lot of them. Because let's be clear, these people only have a limited time on stage, most panels, at these events are an hour or less, more likely less. The financial moves that these people made, they have advisors, they have people that they pay hefty amounts of money on a yearly basis to make sure that they're able to make sound financial decisions. You think they're gonna be able to sit in front of you and tell you everything that their CPAs and all of these people are doing for them? Absolutely not. There's a very small population of people in this world that really know how that shit works and they get paid handsomely to do it. There's others that learn a little couple things here and there and it may work for them, but it's also not sound financial advice because duplicating what they're teaching you could get you in trouble with the IRS if you're not doing it correctly. Ultimately, I think it is more so a community thing, like a social gathering, like people that are interested in this common field this is an opportunity for you to meet people. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions. Hopefully they'll answer them in a sound way, but it's really to make you feel good. It's really to help you spend money. What do you think the overall goal of a conference is, right? They put out a lot of money. They spend a lot of money. They put a lot of time and resources into this. They want to get that back and they're going to do it by making you feel good. But the feel good doesn't come from necessarily having all of the food stations. It doesn't necessarily come from having all the water stations. It doesn't necessarily come from having all the proper disability accessibility stuff. All of that it would be great if they did that. I hope they do. But ultimately, they're getting people that you like, that you love, that you otherwise would trust, getting them to spend time with you, giving you access so that you can possibly meet these people, shake their hands and, you know, try to build up your network. Do whatever you can, work your move. Some people are gonna do that and they're gonna elevate whether they learn from the speakers or not. Some people came there thinking that they was gonna take out their notebooks and like take notes and all of that good shit. I'm sad to say most of the time, you're not gonna get that. You're gonna need a more intimate setting to even accomplish anything remotely close to that. So I'm not here to bash earn your leisure. I'm also not necessarily here to advocate and co-sign them. I watch their show from time to time. I think that Rashad and Troy, I think they're pretty good dudes. I think that they're pretty genuine, but it's pretty clear that they don't really like opposition and being challenged either. I mean, we kind of seen that before. So I don't know. Hopefully they, 
hopefully they take the criticisms into consideration moving forward. I mean, you would definitely want to get your consumer base to be happy with you, you know, so that you can get repeat customers. They're paying a lot of money to be there. So you would want to listen to your constituents, but I guess it'll remain to be seen until 2024. Y'all let me know what y'all think of this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates and I will see y'all on the next one, all right? Much love and respect, y'all. Peace.